Hey there guys, DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. And boy do I love the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch is right up there. Top three favorite consoles of all time. Love that thing. I absolutely adore that system. And uh, yeah, I've got quite a big collection. Mostly import Japanese games, a lot of them you've never heard of. And this is the most craziest game in my entire collection, bar none. So yeah, you all saw the fun not title. This isn't me bragging or anything like that. I'll tell you straight away, I didn't pay what it said. What was it, like 330 or more? I didn't pay that, obviously, for this. I used to be a, a partner with PlayAsia. They would give me money to, to spend in their store. Obviously, they've had to cut all that down now. Everyone's pulling their purse strings, you know, due to everything that's going on in the world. And uh, this is the last thing I was ever able to get from this. Cost me a couple of, <laughs> I think it was like three months worth of, you know, them giving me what they give me plus me spending a bit of money on it as well it cost me about a hundred quid but the reason I bought this instead of like a whole heap of games is because I've got so many games in my collection that I'm still to play and I thought you know what I love Space Invaders I love collecting retro um, uh, uh, collections for my Nintendo Switch I think the system's so so good for that sort of thing and yeah like I just decided you know what I'm gonna buy something that's so ridiculously lavish and I doubt anyone's gonna do a video on it because it's so stupidly overpriced I'm gonna do a video on it and that's what this is <laughs> this is the most expensive game in my collection as a new game but what I will say is this isn't that heavy I was genuinely expecting, because I know what's in here, I was expecting it to be a lot more heavier than this. I'm very, very worried <laughs> this is box one of two for this one game, the Space Invaders Invincible Collection, the Famitsu exclusive release. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, considering I know what's in here, that's not very heavy. That's not very heavy. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe what I saw in the picture that I thought was going to be this big is actually going to be this big. <laughs> we will see. We will see. Look at all that. Let's empty it all. Very nice packaging. <laughs> I've got to clear all that up now. Um, yeah. Woo. Okay. Let's just. It's a big one. I'm gonna put it out and show you guys. There it is. Now I can see a box on top. I know that box is what I'm after. It is definitely smaller than I thought it was. Ah, it's snowing. It's actually really bloody cold. I never go in the garage. Why did I do that? Um, oops. I never go in the garage this early because our heaters aren't that great out here. This is the games room that we turned that we turned from a garage into a games room. Anyway, so yes, this is the Space Invaders Invincible Collection Special Edition. I'm going to do a lot of videos based around Space Invaders in time. I've got some great, great videos. I've lost my scissors. Oh no, look, here they are. <laughs> Let's open this bad boy up. Now there's a lot of different uh, versions of this to get. This was the only one left. The reason why it was literally double the price of what it should have been. So I think this is about 120, 150 pounds roughly. But by adding uh, this bit, that doubles the price. Okay. But this is the base thing that's the, the, the decent amount of money. So, Space Invaders Invincible Collection. And look, it's come with stickers. I think that was the Amazon part of the exclusive. I didn't know that was even part of this. Wow, okay, so Space Invaders, Invincible Collection, Special Edition, Famitsu Edition. Ridiculous. So let's open up this bad boy. I've already scratched it. Already scratched it. Mm. Calm down, Daniel. You've already scratched it. So the stickers are on the outside, and here is ah, the box. It's a very nice big box. I'm looking at this, and I know I'm going to have to rearrange my shelves because I don't think they're tall enough to put this on. <laughs> Any other game collectors think like that? So yeah, let's open it up. I'll let you guys see it before me. Uh, here we go. Oh, it's a bit stiff. And here it is. It's a beautiful box, it's gotta be said. Very, very nice. So, this is the Tato Tate Bag. This is a recreation of the original Tate Bag that was used in old Space Invader uh, game arcades in the, I'm gonna get this wrong, is it 70s or 80s? I'm, I'm gonna say late 70s. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but basically, oh, that is literally how big it is, there you go. So basically, the idea of this is, the game was so incredibly popular in Japan, Space Invaders, that what they ended up doing is they ended up having their own Space Invaders cafes. They would have entire buildings dedicated to Space Invaders, and this is one of the a recreation of one of the bags that I'm assuming you you'd get from a gift shop or something along those lines. That's quite cool. We have, we have this. So my understanding of this, I'm trying to remember because they're so, so vague of the stuff that you get in these 
these these little these little things. So these are recreations of the artwork found on the side of the cabinets. Obviously, I can't read any of it, but hey, it's still very nice to have. And look, there you go. There's a Majesto 12. Then you've got this, and I'm hoping I've not seen anybody else do this un, um, this unboxing. How am I going to get this out? Oh, here we go. The Space Invaders Material Collection book. Now, this is so that I can do a complete history one day. I, want, I, I already know a lot of information, a lot of history on Space Invaders, but I want to make sure I get as much as I can. And, ah, oh, fantastic. Look, it's entirely <laughs> unreadable to the English eye. Ah, oh, this is going to be fun to have to try and translate, isn't it? Yes, and there's some images right there that I can, I've actually used in one of my more recent videos, the outrun video of the old uh, arcades, um, the Space Invaders uh, cafes that they used to have in Japan. It's a very, very interesting history. Um, oh, there's going to be so much. Even the pictures alone are worth it. There's some great stuff in there. Very excited to look through there. Look, an entire history on every game released as well. That's good. Now that's not all, as far as I'm aware. Okay, yep, yeah, let's take that part out. Oh, here's where the game is. So there's the game itself. That's my 99th Switch game. There's the game, no artwork on the inside. That's very, very lazy, very, very lazy. And there's my code so that I can download, I believe, the Mega Drive version. I'm just gonna butt in here a little bit, guys, because I got that wrong. This little bit of paper right here is actually for Arkanoid versus Space Invaders. Um, the Mega Drive release, sadly, I don't have in this big collection because I didn't pre-order it from Amazon in Japan, which is very naughty. However, it's not as naughty as this. This is obviously the big version of the game, and because I got this, that means that I got Lunar Rescue, Space Cyclone, and Space Invaders DX, and anybody that just got the cartridge on its own does not get those games. If you ask me, that's a little bit scummy, Tato. That's not good. And then we also have this. This is essentially the Space Invaders Invincible board game. Now, not to be confused with the recent Kickstarter board game, Space Invaders board game, which I have been in chats with, with the developers, by the way, and I'm, I'm hoping to do a, a proper review on that as and when it comes out. I'll, I'll try and get this out without losing any pieces or anything, but this is, yeah, look, I'm going to have to pop out. No way. Well, that's a bit naff. I don't know if I want to do it. You have to literally get scissors and cut these out. These aren't like, you know, like easy foldable breakable card you have to literally cut them out that's that's bad that's not good look there's all the cards that you need for the game you have to literally cut everyone out come on you could have done this tato that's not good i'm not too happy about that oh thankfully the instructions are entirely in japanese i'm a bit annoyed i have to cut out the actual cards that's not good, that's not good, but regardless, I will probably do it, and it'll be part of this video. There's the actual board itself, the Space Invaders board, there you go, like that. Mm. It's one of those things you want to keep it in its best condition, but you're literally about to cut up the things that it gave you. Anyway, that's the main special edition. Now let's look at the reason why it was double the price. This is the Famitsu part, and... Would you look at that? Oh yes. Let's have a look. So, <laughs> this is so stupid. So look, there's the top of the box. And then, <laughs> you've got all of these little bags. And in case you don't know, they are little Space Invaders plates. There you go. Don't tilt it too much. <laughs> these are little Space Invader plates. I was expecting plates. <laughs> Not that big. But hey, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So yeah, it's one of those things I remember seeing. It's really, really bad pixelated image when I first saw these, uh, which obviously gave the impression that they were a lot bigger than they were. Um, I, was like, I can't even see the Space Invaders. And then when you look closely, you can just see them hidden in the flowers. It's a very, very bizarre thing. But I like owning weird, bizarre collections in my collection. And this is, without a doubt, the most ridiculous and there you go there's my space invaders collection there you go now let's actually see if this is worth it uh, from a game point of view as of the recording of this video space invaders invincible collection does not have a western release date and even though i will obviously not be knocking it down a point due to the language barrier i'll make sure to let you know just how user friendly it is 
As stated already, this is the special edition of the Invincible Collection, so this is the version I will be playing, and I'll be talking about the differences at the end. This version comes with 11 games in total, and the first is obviously the original Space Invaders. Not much to say here except for the fact that as far as I can tell, it's pixel perfect and plays just as you would expect. It's as basic as they come, you're at the bottom in your little cannon and you shoot up at the invaders. Upon starting the game, you get the choice of playing in normal mode or challenge mode. We all know exactly what normal mode is, it's pretty much a perfect representation of the original arcade game. But challenge mode, however, involves you attempting to shoot down all of your enemies within 90 seconds. This takes a few attempts and was a nice addition. However, from what I can tell, it's the only challenge for this game. Adding extra challenges such as hit only the UFO, shoot your bases, limit your shots, shooting the invaders in a certain order, all of these things just would have been a nice and surely easy thing to do. But like I said, this is it. Space Invaders colour is the same as it should be I suppose because for those that don't know, this is exactly the same as the original game. But they added colour to the original arcade unit by putting down strips of coloured cellophane on the screen. You know, just to make it pop out a little more than the original and that's why your fired shot changes colour as it goes up the screen. The challenge mode on this version is a little different involving you to get the highest score you can in 3 minutes on just one life. Again, more challenges would have been nice, but still, it was a nice addition. It is also worth noting that when you pause the game, the options besides what the actual buttons do are entirely in English. You can reset the game, quick save, quick load, rotate the screen any way you wish, which means it works perfectly on the flip grip, change the amount of lives you start off with, add scan lines and play around with the screen size a little too. The controls are adjustable too, which is a good thing as Space Invaders only has essentially one button and you can use the remaining buttons for differently timed rapid fires. Space Invaders 2 is next and honestly there really isn't much more involved with this one. It has an arguably more interesting attract mode, apparently the later levels give off ever so slight variations on the classic formula. You've got some intermissions, later levels drop extra invaders from the UFOs and in my opinion this is a lot harder than the original game. A nice and necessary addition to the collection, but unless you get really, really good at it, you are unlikely to notice many differences at all. The challenge in this one is to activate the Space Invaders 2 Easter Egg, which requires that you shoot every invader besides one of the bottom rows until last, which triggers a hidden rainbow pattern. It's incredibly hard to do, and nope, I have never been able to do it. Oh, and by the way guys, these challenges are actually all written in Japanese, so unless you get Google Translate out on your phone, you're just going to have to guess what they are. Okay, next up is Lunar Rescue, a pretty addictive spin-off from the series which involves you dropping down and dodging an asteroid field, landing on a platform and then shmupping your way up the screen back to your ship. It's simple, it's pretty addictive, and it's a nice mix up to the original formula. This one's challenge is simply to reach 1,500 points as quickly as possible. Space Cyclone is the second spin-off, it's a tough shooter which involves you dodging enemy projectiles and trying your best to shoot these little aliens before they fall into your playing area. If you don't, they go back up to the top of the screen and this little devil thing shoots lightning at you. Honestly, this one is a bit forgettable as it's simply just got so much going on on the screen. Nice to be included in this collection, but honestly, I didn't give it that much time. The challenge on this one is to shoot one of the bomb projectiles that drops from one of the particular UFOs. A pretty hard thing to do. Majestic 12 and Super Space Invaders 91 are both on the list too and honestly they both don't need to be as they're almost the same game. Super Space Invaders 91 is the better release in my opinion as that version comes with bosses for the first time in the series and Majestic 12 does not. If there are any other differences beside this, I am yet to find them. So in this game, the whole formula gets upgraded, you now have shields, the way your invaders act changes depending on what set you fight, you can get power ups, as stated you got bosses and you can actually choose the path you take on the way to the final boss resulting in multiple playthroughs. On top of this, the mid level sections provide this excellent cow mutilation mini game which requires you to protect a herd of cows from invading UFOs. If they grab one, you need to hit it just right to save them. In my opinion, these two games are huge standout titles in the collection and I've already played through Super Space Invaders 91 a good couple of times and I will no doubt continue to do so many, many more times. Just like most of the others, Majestic 12 connects all of the cow challenges together for its challenge mode which is just brilliant, 
but sadly Super Space Invaders 91 does not have a challenge. Space Invaders DX is a nice addition too, not only does it have a classic mode, but you also got a competitive multiplayer mode and a parody mode which plays like normal for the most part, but each of its 9 levels are themed after different arcade properties such as New Zealand Story, Arkanoid and my personal favourite, Rainbow Island. This challenge, just like the original, requires you to destroy each invader in 90 seconds. Space Invaders Extreme is the 10th game on the list which is an absolute must own. If you've never played it, do yourself a favour and give it a go. I played it back in the day on my PSP and playing it in HD on the Switch is absolutely gorgeous. This is a fast paced version of the original game with stunning visuals, excellent music, a gambling type power up system, bonus stages, different formations of the invaders. Seriously, if this is the first time you've ever heard about this game and this compilation, you know, isn't for you, I still highly suggest you check out Space Invaders Extreme. I seriously can't get enough of this game, it changes a lot but it's core gameplay style is still here and even though it's been close to a decade since I played this game, I can already see myself improving and getting further into the game without losing a cannon after each playthrough. Sadly however, it doesn't come with a challenge mode. And finally we have Space Invaders Gigamax which was another game that played a big part in me wanting to get this collection in the first place. So to call it by its full title, Space Invaders Gigamax 4 SE is a game that as far as I'm aware has never been released before on home consoles. It's a flashy party mode styled Space Invader game that before this was only ever seen at anniversary events, special Tato conventions and as you can see was only ever played via a projector on the side of a massive wall or even a building. It's a very, very cool game and the release found on this compilation is essentially a 4 player version of that 8 player game. And yes, I played it outside projected on the side of my neighbours house in my back garden and it was really, really fun. Sadly due to the virus that's going on in the world I wasn't able to have a couple of mates round to play it in 4 player which is what I wanted to do originally for this video, but yeah. Come on, you can see how it plays. It's a great, albeit rather short, experience that I will be setting up in the game room when we have barbecues in the future. Sadly, however, this version also does not come with a challenge mode either. And finally, you got your download card which slaps Arkanoid vs Space Invaders on your home screen and for all of those that saw my recent Space Invaders crossover video, you will already know that I love this game. It's a game that only works in handheld mode as you need to use your hand to move your Arkanoid stick around the screen. It was originally a mobile game that didn't ask you to pay to upgrade or anything like that at all. It was just you shooting back the projectiles of the invaders in approximately 100 levels with lots of upgrades and again excellent detail and music to go along with it. And again. This is a must own for fans of either of these games and all of the reviews that I've seen have done nothing but praise this title. So before going ahead and looking at the rest of the bits on my special edition box, what do I think of this compilation itself? Well, it's pretty great. I love Space Invaders, I love collecting these retro collections on my Switch and this is a good selection of titles. Problem is, there really should have been more and I don't quite understand why there isn't. To download the Arkanoid game you need to have a Japanese Nintendo Switch account which is very easy to set up and I'll leave a link in the description which will show you how you can set that up. It's easy, it's free and once downloaded you can use your original user account to play it. Look. Don't get me wrong, what is on here is great, the original game obviously, Super Space Invaders 91, Space Invaders Extreme, Gigamax and the Arkanoid game are all brilliant titles that fully stand out and I suppose that if they was being sold separately then they would cost more than the compilation itself which is around £40 but everything else is just, well, it's just nice to have. Whereas the amazing arcade game Space Invaders 95, The Attack of the Lunar Loonies, or the sequel to Space Invaders Extreme, which is still a DS exclusive that would have worked great on my flip grip. Or what about Space Invaders Get Even, the WiiWare exclusive title, and probably the saddest omission is Space Invaders Infinity Gene, originally on the Xbox Live Arcade. These would have been great titles which would have shown off the diversity of this excellent franchise even more than this collection has started to do. 
Now, with that said, a lot of these collections do end up getting updates with extra games added as free downloads in the future, and you never know that might happen here. But right now, as far as I can tell, that option does not exist, and I highly doubt those massive games will get added into this. Plus, the worst thing about it is, as stated, you got free games here that are not on every version of the collection, and even my version doesn't come with Space Invaders 90 for the Mega Drive, which is an excellent game that should have been added. It's a real shame. But still, the collection is still solid. I've already pumped a lot of time into it. Would you do the same? Well, that depends on how much you like Space Invaders. I'm going to leave a couple of affiliate links down below in case you want to buy it physically or digitally via the Japanese Nintendo eShop, which may in all honesty be the best option. Anyway, looking at the rest of the collection, the bag, yep, yeah, that's nice. The cards, Yep, they're nice. The book is actually really nice, although hard to read. Regardless, this is going to be an excellent resource for future videos. And the board game? Well, after I sadly had to cut out all of the cards, which again, I'm pretty upset about, I wasted an entire evening of my wife's life trying to translate the rules using Google Translate on my phone. And after a few hours, we finally worked it out. And it's really quite a good game. The way it works is you have a collection of action cards in your hand, you each play one at the same time, you flip them all over at the same time, including one for the invaders. This tells you the order of which you play through from a low number to a high number. Everyone performs their actions in that order, whether that be shoot, move, place a UFO, or even move the invaders along exactly how they move in the game. And the idea is to shoot away the entire play field to win the game as a team. And if you do that, then it's the player, AKA the cannon with the most destroyed aliens and ufos obviously the higher up they are on the play field the more points they are worth who is the ultimate winner i was seriously surprised at how simple the game was it had a good mix of luck and skill and i love the way you constantly need to change up your style of play from helping out the team or quickly running to shoot down an unnecessary ufo for the personal points they captured the arcade game pretty perfectly Honestly, besides it all just being on card, which you need to cut out yourself, it's a solid board game. Will it be better than the soon-to-be-released Kickstarter board game? Well, time will tell, and if you guys are interested, then maybe I'll do a video comparing them when that one eventually gets released. And there you have it. That's my way too in-depth review of Space Invaders Invincible Collection Special Edition for Mitsu set. It's a compilation that has its flaws, as all of these collections do. I would have loved for there to be more games in the collection, and of course, genuine cards or tokens for the board game should have been a must. But overall, I'm really happy with this set. Sadly, I wasn't able to show you guys everything here in its full glory due to not being able to invite people around for the four-player Gigamax multiplayer or the five-player rendition of the board game. And getting sushi right now is pretty hard due to the current situation we're all in, which I would have loved to have done to show off the plates in all of their glory. But hey, it's good enough for me to still want to do these things in my own time and not just for a video that I'm going to upload to YouTube, which just goes to show that the set is actually worth its price. Well, maybe not that price. <laughs> no, no, no.